Private and secure mobile browsing. I found seven Android web browsers that put privacy and security first. Checking any statistical data year over year shows that mobile website traffic is growing. And chances are most folks are just using the built-in web browser to get online, whether that is Google's Chrome or Apple's Safari. But these are not the most secure or private web browsers available. You can actually replace your default web browser on your phone with a third-party one down downloaded from the Google Play Store or Apple's App Store. But which one can you actually trust? Which one blocks trackers the best? Do any of them protect you from location tracking? How fast are they? Convenience and reliability is key for introducing any privacy-focused product to the general public. So let's go ahead and look at these, not from a privacy absolutionist perspective, but from a I'm tired of fixing my family's phones perspective. So I am taking a look at mobile browsers because I am so annoyed at all of these companies online who sell and share our data and it being collected on data broker sites. So I'm also very happy to partner up with one of my favorite companies, Delete Me. Your personal information is being collected and sold by data brokers all the time, putting your privacy at risk. For example, just last year, the FTC sued a data broker called Kochava for selling mobile device location data via a publicly accessible marketplace. But Delete Me is here to help you take back control. Delete Me is the leading online privacy service that removes your personal information from data broker websites, so you can keep your personal life private. They have a team of experts who work diligently to remove your information from these sites, and they provide you with regular updates and a comprehensive privacy report every quarter. I first heard about Delete Me from some of my friends who worked in the information security industry. I had this physical stalker showing up at my workplace years ago. I didn't want it to happen again. Even though I actively put myself out there and share my life, there are certain parts that really don't need to be on the internet. Internet. My friends recommended Delete Me, which still is the go-to service to opt out of data broker sites. After hearing the name brought up so many times from all of my InfoSec expert friends, I was like, cool, this is exactly what I need, and I signed up for it. With Delete Me, you can protect your identity and your personal information from falling into the wrong hands. Use the code SNUBS at checkout, that's S-N-U-B-S, for 20% off any of the consumer plans, or you can just click the link right down below and hit up Join Delete me.com slash morse code to sign up today and that code will automatically apply at checkout so you still get that coupon sign up now and safeguard your personal information today and a huge thank you to delete me for sponsoring this episode and for being a channel partner now here are my seven plus one mobile browser that you should take a look at for security and privacy in 2023 i tested these with speed and convenience in mind but i also looked for privacy and security centric features that made them stay stand out compared to the competition. Number one is Brave Browser. This is everybody's top choice. I had no issues watching YouTube and this browser blocked ads in the video and it asked to block cookie consent notices. The setting setup is very similar to Chrome, so it's very easy to find options like private tabs, bookmarks, etc. Brave also uses their own Brave search engine and it's one of the very few to give you a specific number count of block trackers and ads. Like here, I block 72 trackers on m.youtube.com. I had no idea that there were so many trackers on YouTube. They have default blocking of trackers and ads and cookies and fingerprinting, but it is based on Chromium. Brave is good for entertainment since it can also do background audio as well. So that's a nice little nifty feature. Number two is DuckDuckGo. Now DDG for short does not block YouTube ads or ads on the page immediately, and it does not have a lot of settings to change. There's no indication of how many trackers it's blocking on the mobile browser, but it is very easy to find your bookmarks and other settings. DuckDuckGo has this very neat feature called fireproofing, and it will whitelist a site's cookies and keep you signed into that site even after you close the browser or use the fire button. Now, usually closing that browser will erase all of the cookies. DuckDuckGo can also manage cookie pop-ups, and there's a setting called global privacy control that can send a request to a website to restrict selling or sharing your data. Next, number three,
three is Firefox, which does not block YouTube ads in the video or on the website. I noticed that immediately. The data collection defaults to on for things such as usage and technical data and marketing data. So you should definitely look at that and see which ones you want to disable. One feature that I really like is enhanced tracking protection, which keeps trackers and scripts from following you around the web. Google is the default browser, but you can also change that. Add-ons are fully featured. History is not clear unless using the private tabs, which you can find through the little mask icon. Firefox does not use Chromium though, and instead is built on their own platform, which is called the Quantum Browser Engine. Number four is Firefox Focus. This one is different from Firefox. Now this one also does not block ads in YouTube videos, but it does block the web page ads immediately without changing any settings. One cool feature is that you can lock the app and unlock it with your fingerprint. I love that. The default search engine for this one is unfortunately Google, but you can change it. It does clear your search history whenever you close the app. Settings are all very easy to understand and it can block trackers, JavaScript, web fonts, and cookies. You can also choose what kind of cookies you would like to block. There's also this handy feature, it's HTTPS only mode and you can block potentially malicious sites as well. Now Firefox Focus is open source and it's based on Firefox. Number five is a new one for me. This one is called Aloha. Mahalo, my sister used to live in Hawaii. I love that. Now this one has a VPN included. It includes the Adblock Plus plugin automatically. That's so hard to say for me, I don't know why. And you can further customize your blocking preferences in the settings. You can also lock your private secret tabs with a passcode or a fingerprint. Optionally, you can create an Aloha profile to sync data across devices. Searches are defaulted to a private search engine and you can set up a passcode for the app as well. HTTPS everywhere is not enabled by default, but you can enable this in the settings. One thing that I really wanted to make note of is that there's this whole section for personalized ads, and those are enabled by default, which means that your device ID is shared with advertisers. Now, these are quote, randomly generated unique device IDs. The ad block is also not enabled by default and needs to be turned on. There are some prompts here and there asking you to buy premium, which does come with a faster VPN service and some other perks, but the ads are not intrusive, so that didn't really turn me off from Aloha. And Aloha is built on Chromium. Number six is Ghostery, and it does remember your tabs whenever you reopen it, but you can force it to close them after specific periods of time, and the search engine defaults to Ghostery Glow. <laughs> it's a cute little name for it. Ghostery tab is like the incognito mode for this browser, and HTTPS only mode is disabled by default, but it is included in the settings. You can also tell it to delete your browsing data whenever you quit. YouTube ads in the video and on the page are both blocked with Ghostery. Number seven is Opera, surprisingly. Now, Opera uses Google as its default search engine. You can change this in the settings as well, and it automatically blocks in video and web page ads on YouTube, for example. The settings are very easy to understand. It does show you a count of how many ads the browser has blocked for you. There is a VPN built in, which you can enable. You do have to enable it, along with tracker and cookie controls. There's this very nice and super handy quick settings tab that that pops up from the little person icon at the bottom. I really like how quick and seamless it is to enable the VPN. It's just one click. Ad blocking is just one click. So if you ever need to turn those off or turn them back on, you can easily access that information. Now, Opera is also based on Chromium. And number eight, of course, the last one on my list, but definitely a lot of people's favorites is the Tor browser. Now this one does not let you record the screen or take screenshots, which is very privacy conscious. So pardon my not so fancy video trying to record this on a separate phone. Tor definitely has a time and place for privacy absolutionist use cases, but its speed really deters me from recommending it for most people because the convenience definitely drops whenever you're trying to do anything in the Tor browser because it is so slow. It also did not block ads in the YouTube videos or on the pages in my testing by default. Tor browser is really great for the utmost of privacy blocking, but I think that the speeds will definitely deter most people if they were looking at and comparing these side by side and they didn't necessarily need all of the security and privacy 
privacy features that Tor offers. So how did these do in terms of speeds? Well, all of these were tested at the same time on 5G here in Denver, and here they are all side by side. You can see that only a couple of them tracked around 100 down, and many of them sat between 50 megs to around 80 megs download speeds, and a few of them were pretty slow, Tor being one of those. Now, there are three others in this speed test that you probably noticed on the screen that I did not include in my best of list, and those were Avast, Vivaldi, and Kiwi. Now, Vivaldi uses Bing for search, but strangely, YouTube video ads are completely blacked out instead of skipped over and disabled. And it does block the website ads, so that's good. In the settings, there are not a lot of customizations you can do for security and privacy, and these settings are kind of buried down the screen, which makes me feel like they are a secondary thought. There is no VPN built in and only two main settings pages for security and privacy, and Vivaldi is built on Chromium, so there wasn't anything specific that made Vivaldi stand out to me. Kiwi does not block video ads on YouTube, and the default search engine for this one is also being very similar to Vivaldi. Kiwi also doesn't have a VPN built in, and it does not have many security and privacy settings that you can customize as well. Kiwi is based on Chromium, and it is certainly lightweight, but I don't feel like security and privacy are major features for this one. Avast is at the very bottom of my list that I was testing. It immediately scans your phone, it scans it, and gives you warnings about vulnerabilities and pushes an upgrade on you you have to hit back to actually start using it as a browser. Speeds were also very slow, and it also does not alert that a site is requesting location data. This one is a hard pass, and I really cannot recommend Avast because those constant prompts trying to get you to, to send them money and upgrade just really bugged me. So in total, I gave you seven main ones that do factor in convenience, one that is more for like security and privacy absolutionists out there, and then I have three that I would definitely not recommend. So there's 11 quick looks at the security and privacy features of these browsers, three of which I don't recommend, some of which have more privacy than others. I do think that there is one for everyone. And hey, the best part is you don't have to use just one. If you want to use Brave for most things, but you want to switch over to Tor for, I don't know, banking, then go for it. I downloaded all of these on my phone all at the same time, and I use them all at the same time. No issues whatsoever. You can switch back and forth at your leisure. Check out this video for more security and privacy tips or this video that YouTube thinks you will like. Bye y'all.